Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's The Bear Facts, and I'm here with Maxanne Lewis, and I could not be more excited or happier that you are our guest today because I am such a fan of yours and always have been, and I was so honored, honored is the word, to have you singing on my album, which just dropped this weekend. Oh, and, wow, man. Yeah, yeah, so it's out. I had a lot of fun working on that, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's called Fresh Bear Tracks. So there's a dozen songs on the album. And to show you how much I love this woman, and Tony Bronicle, my producer, loves this woman, she's on eight of them, okay? She's singing <laughs> on eight of them. So it's great to have you here. Maxanne, um, you were uh, born in Tulsa? Oklahoma. Yeah, in, in, Tulsa? in Tulsa, yeah. Yeah. I was actually born in Tulsa, but a suburb outside of Tulsa, a little tiny place called Oak Mulgee, but it's Tulsa. In okay. And uh, let me ask you a question, just, be just because I know that, you know, I've been to Tulsa and Tulsa has some famous, you know, famous people that came out of there. One, yeah. of, one that comes to mind, aside from you, is Leon Russell. Yes, who is a very good friend. He was a very good friend of my mom and, and me and uh, just an incredible person as well. I loved him. He was fun, talented, had a very different take on the world, but it made a lot of sense if you sit down and talk to him. He was cool. He was what was it like? Really cool what was it like to meet him? Did he did he how did you how did you meet him? Let's put it that way. Where where did well you? I just met him in Tulsa? I mean, he was, you know, he's from there. And I as his uh he, you know, went out of the country and traveled and met people because of his musicianship. And and uh when he came back to he he really liked being in Tulsa, so he built a studio there. He bought a, a church okay. that um uh that he that he reconfigured to be his home studio, uh, you know, in Tulsa, his location there. And he did a, a lot of people came there and did a lot of work and that kind of thing. I hadn't, I was still a kid. I hadn't gotten into um, working in the industry yet, but right. my mom and dad owned a catering company and, and we did, they did a lot of catering for the oil business and oil clubs and the petroleum clubs and that sure. kind of thing. So uh, somehow I, Leon went some, was somewhere and he tasted some of my mom's foods and things that she you know, was catering. And then he started having her cater his studio and they became, he loved good food. And my mom was like a major, major good cook. Oh, and so, <laughs> so and, and a good gospel singer too. My mm -hmm. mom could blow and and uh, so that, that he just loved my mom and, and that's how that happened. And I met him from there. And then when he married out here, when yeah. he married Mary Russell, I was yeah. friends mm -hmm. with Mary. Okay. And that, and then I really got to, you know, re really hang out with him more when they lived in Toluca Lake and, and had a home here together and everything and had their children. So you were born Paulette Parker. Yes. And then you changed your name to Maxanne well, Lucas. Yeah, well, I, my name Maxanne was always around because it's it's like a native a native name, you know. So that and, was always. And your around. uncle said that you were the goddess of the wind. Of the wind, right? That's okay. what that name means. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's that's great. Well, you're a goddess to to me, and <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So you studied piano. Right. Is that true? I did. I, well, I studied more than piano. I actually went to a wonderful place that I, I was, we were, somebody was just writing about it online. It was called Latimer's Conservatory of Music, okay. which, uh, well, at that time growing up in Oklahoma, Oklahoma was very segregated. Right. Very much. I mean, like, like, oh, you, you, like the Berlin Wall had nothing on the segregation of Oklahoma. Wow. Wow. You know, it really in Tulsa and, and throughout Oklahoma at that time, but there was no actual wall, like right. the Berlin Wall was a tangible yeah. piece of architecture, but it was just as strong and just, I mean, but it was, the Berlin Wall was a political wall, 
Right. The wall in Oklahoma was definitely racist and hardcore. I mean, really hardcore. Wow. With all the things that people hear about, you know, Klansmen and, and Minutemen and the Daughters of American Revolution and, you know, just name it. And um, so we didn't get to, there wasn't a lot of exchange, you know, when I was a kid with anything like that, but we had a great uh, community. Our community was just great. And we had a lot of fun doing a lot of music and stuff. And so it made our community really strong. Now, let me ask you a question, um, because I remember Leon once, once saying that um, it was a dry, a dry state, right? Yeah. Uh, so that <laughs> he could go and play clubs when he was really, really young. Yeah. Yeah, because there was no alcohol. There was no alcohol. Supposedly, let me put it like this, <laughs> no alcohol supposedly being served. Right. And then they had something called the BYOB, which is bring your own bottle. Right. They didn't bring it. The club didn't sell it to you. But th what they did sell was the table set up, like right. with all the mixers and ice and all the glasses and that, those kind of those kind of things. Okay. But yeah, I mean, Oklahoma is one of those places. If you ever want to see, uh, it was. Uh, everybody says to me now that oh, it's really changed and it's really progressive. But it was. Uh, evangelical bible belt hate mongering wow if you can wow. i mean that that that's that's what it was at that time when i was a kid jj kale i know who jj kale is yeah 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 okay. who what what other uh influences um for example um i would i would think mahalia jackson right definitely my mom had every record she ever made my mom and had, I knew all of her songs. My mom had Mahalia. My mom had Dinah Washington. My yeah. Mom, my mom had Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Sarah Vaughn. Yeah, all of that. Yeah. Sarah Vaughn, Carmen McRae. Right. You know, all those. My mom had that. Plus all the Ruth Brown and her and my dad. They had Ruth Brown um, uh, and Ray Charles, Little Junior Parker. You know, like a lot of blues artists, Bobby Blue Bland, um, just an amazing. Just an did you amazing. did you ever sing with your mom together? Oh yeah, I played for her in church and okay. and 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 that kind of thing. I I would play for her sometimes, and then when I grew up and 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 uh, really left home, then she got other people to play for her. But she was really in demand. I mean, like she could turn a church out. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Let's see. So you're moving along. You're playing. You, you're starting to get some gigs, I would imagine. Yeah, I started working in Tulsa um, at a place called the Casa Delgado. Okay. Um, whom some some who it was rumored. I don't know if this is true, but it was rumored that the guy that started that club was actually in the witness protection program, and that's why he <laughs> landed there because he wasn't from are from Tulsa or Oklahoma or anything. He was definitely back East. He was from back East, like New Jersey, or New York, that kind of thing. And then he started this little club and, and it was just really funny. Like I said, well, where did he come from? What is he, you know, you could tell by his accent and everything sure. that, he was, that he was definitely from back East. He was a Jersey and, guy. <laughs> yeah, so he had that thing. So everybody said, he's probably, he's in witness protection, you know, everything. but no, we don't have, we didn't know that for sure, but that's what a lot of young people who played there thought, you know, that kind of thing. It was kind of like the un, the whispered rumor, you know. Okay. So but I worked there with a guy named Carl Day. And and the owner of that club at that time decided to call us night and day. <laughs> <laughs> but Carl Day was actually uh, incredible. He was a white guy with blonde hair, had his hair cut into like a ducktail thing. He wore like all anything that James Brown did, he wanted to do it. And he actually could do it. He wow. was actually really talented. He could really sing and really dance. So we had a great show. It was really fun. That, that's <laughs> so cool. Um, how did uh, how did Ike, Ike Turner get a hold of you or hear about you? And how did well, you- Well, from that gig, you, from yeah, that gig, we just did that gig on the weekends. And uh, Ike and Tina were in, now because we were playing there in that area, 
a lot of people would come from Missouri and Kansas right. because of where Tulsa is located up in the Northeast corner, kind of close to those state lines. Sure. People think nothing of driving a couple of hours to go to a club if they, if they like it, you know, that kind sure. of thing. So people have been there to see us. I mean, all you know, the little weekends that we played. And, in, and while they were traveling, they did a show in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. And at the end of the show, they made an announcement that they were looking for one more girl to join the show. They wanted to hire. And if anybody wanted to come backstage and audition at the end, this is in Wichita, um, please do. Well, nobody came back. So they waited around, just kind of thinking somebody's going to step up, you know, and then they're packing up. And one guy just said, and I don't even know who it was. Somebody, some one guy just said, well, you know, are you looking for another girl to join your group? There's a girl, where are you going when you leave here? You know, just a fan. And he goes, oh, we're going to Tulsa. We're going to play Tulsa, Oklahoma. The guy goes, oh, there's a girl there that can really sing. You really might like her. And he gave Ike and Tina my name. They called the, the musicians union in Tulsa, got my phone number. And I called me on the phone on a Saturday, Saturday morning, like seven o'clock in the morning. And I thought it was my friends playing on the phone because I mean, that was the thing then for people to prank you, your friends to prank you on the phone sure. then. Um, and he said, yeah, I'm here. I'm, I have a group. And he was like very businesslike. And I went like, oh, Dale, who is this? Who is this? Is this T-Bone? What are you doing? Stop playing on the phone. It's too early in the morning for this shit, you know, and I hung up the phone. <laughs> and I hung up the phone and he calls me back and he goes, do not hang up this phone. And when he said it, I could tell that's not a voice I know. Right. And I'm like, okay. And then I was like, I'm so sorry. Oh, I really, my friends are crazy and they always play on the phone. I'm so sorry. He goes, oh, it's okay. But here's the thing, we're gonna be there and we're gonna be at the Mayo Hotel and I want you to come down. And if you're interested, we're looking, someone recommended you, so we'd like to meet you. And if you think you wanna join our show, I was like dumbfounded. And, and I, I was like, okay. So they said they would be there around 6 p.m. and I should come down there and meet them. And I went down and met them at the hotel and I met Tina. And they immediately started, I walked in, Tina wasn't even there. She had got out to a drugstore or something. Ike was on the phone sitting in this big suite and he was on the phone and having a really rough conversation with somebody on the other end. And my girlfriend, a friend of mine, a girl named Lynetta had driven me there um, because um, I couldn't use my mom's car because she had something to do. So my friend Lynetta came to pick me up and drive me around in her boyfriend's car. <laughs> and we went down there and uh, we sat down and waited for him to get off the phone. And I was looking around and just like, and you know how, it, I don't know if anybody else has ever had this, this feeling, but I had this tingle in my stomach. Like my life was getting ready to really seriously change. And I knew that. The, no uni the universe was talking. Universe was talking to you. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, a, just a, like a flutter in my stomach, like, whoa, like that. And I was like, I found myself like holding my stomach, like, and just taking deep breaths just to breathe. Then he got off the phone. He was very friendly, and he just said, "You know, um, so how tall are you?" You know, he wanted to know my height. He had me stand up and just look at, he didn't do anything weird or, you know, inappropriate. He didn't say anything nasty or strange. He just said, how tall are you? How old are you? Do you, are you married? Can you travel? You know, can you do that? You know, are you open to do that? Because we're going to go, this is a world tour. And I was looking at him like, I mean, these are words. So I have how, never how, ever dreamt I'm gonna how, hear. How old? Are you, how old are you at that? At this? Gym? I was like gonna be 19 in about 10 days. How did he sell this to your parents? Oh well, he didn't. Well, what he? What? Let me tell you what happened. I said, well, I then Tina came in. Right. She said, oh, you must be Maxanne. And I, I, yeah, she goes, come on, let's go. And she took me back into another room that was another part of the suite, and she had. There were people in there working on costumes. 
redoing beading, you know, like repairing stuff and cleaning stuff. A thousand, she had about three of like 10 wigs, you know, sitting on heads. People were doing them, you know, working everything. She starts going through her clothes and she pulls out stuff and goes, put this on, put this on. And we, we realized at that time, I wore the same size shoe, the same size dress, everything. And she put one of her wigs on me just to see how I looked. They did my makeup. And then she goes, okay, let's go back out. And we open these doors. And when I go back out, everybody in the show was in the suite. And I, and they, and every, all the band, all the girls, all the, everybody, he says, okay, that's her. This is the new girl. This is Maxanne. And I met everybody. And everybody was like, just applauding. I was all dressed in one of Tina's awesome dresses and everything. Have, and I could wear, like I could, she and I wore the, she and I wore the exact same size shoe. Wow. It was like crazy. It was like a crazy thing. Then I said to him, you have to come talk to my parents before I leave. I mean, I'm not a kid, but I live with my parents. I'm not just going to get up and split. And, you know, sure. so he said, no problem. But we're doing a show tonight. Will they be up after the show? He was like, totally cool. And so we came there after the show. I went to the show. And when, but before that, I went home and I started doing my laundry because I could only take one suitcase. And I told my mom that I had got this job. And she goes, well, you got to talk to your father first. <laughs> like that. Because he wasn't home. That's right. He wasn't home yet. And then he came home and I told him what was happening and that we were going to. And he said, OK, well, they're going to come by. And I said, yeah, after the show, which is kind of late for you guys. But do you think you can? My dad said, no, fine. If this is what you think you really want to do, oh. and my and they came, and they came back with the big tour buses and parked in front of my house. My neighbors all came outside <laughs> because of these big giant buses on our street. And I and Tina came into my house. The band was out standing outside. The buses smoking and that, that kind of thing. My, Tina came in and met my mom and dad and loved our house. She goes, oh, I love your house. It's so pretty and that kind of thing. And she goes, and Tina says, cause they had done the, where they did the gig, they didn't have on-site showers. And so Tina asked if she could take a hot bath while my mom, while my dad and Ike went into my father's office. They closed the door and they stayed in there for an hour. Wow. And, Tina went and, and, and took a bath in my mom's bathroom and, and had all the bubble bath and everything. And then my mom made her something to eat. And then they finally emerged from my dad's office and he goes, he looks at me and he goes, okay, you can go like that. You can do it. And he had, and I shook my dad's hand and gave it. And they both like, they were, they were on, on, on one accord and and, and they never, neither one of them ever said what they said to each other. My father said, we, we came to an understanding and we both respect each other greatly. And I, to the day he died, respected my dad, even though my father had passed away already. He, he said, I wish I had had a dad like your dad. He always oh. said that. Wow, there's a lot of respect shown. Yes. <clears throat> a lot of respect. You know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people have heard your voice on so many things. And I just want to give our listeners just a, a snippet, just a snippet, because you don't blow your horn enough. So I'm going to toot it for you right now. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. These are the artists that this woman has, has, performed and sang with on records, as well as, you know, live. Bonnie Raitt, Van Morrison, Tina Turner, Lowell George, Billy Preston, Roseanne Cash, The Gap Band, Smokey Robinson, Brenda Russell, Tower of Power, Gina Vanelli, Duran Duran, Simple Minds, Ricky Martin, Celine Dion, The Gap Band, The Doobie Brothers, Britney Spears, Les McCann, Jerry Lee Lewis and T Bear. <laughs> yeah, and T Bear. <laughs> and a humble bear. <laughs> but here, here's the thing, okay? You did the singing on Ma Rainey 
for Viola Davis, who couldn't sing those parts, you were the voice of Ma Rainey. Yes. And I want to tell you, I got chill bumps from that. <laughs> really? Yes, I did. <laughs> And I urge all of you because it's nominated and it's winning and it it's this person here is selling it. You are the <laughs> one that's selling it, darling. Thank you very much. I had a, a really great time working with um, Branford Marsalis and uh, the director, Mr. Sure. George Wolf. Um, it was it was an amazing experience. And it went like, I just can say when something, when you say something goes like butter, that's, it just went like butter. It was really fun. I went to Louisiana. Um, Branford had a, already assembled a group of uh, like a rhythm section of people to play. He's a great leader, yes, great yes. sense of humor, but very much um, aware of the music had to be authentic and how to keep it that way and not because this, remember this story is a uh, hundred years ago. That's how long ago Ma Rainey was doing her thing. And so you, there are certain things about music that hadn't been discovered yet. The, the music hadn't advanced itself forward. So to be authentic, you couldn't overplay or over sing for that matter, you know, okay. to make it really authentic, but we wanted it to be fresh for this particular project. So I thought it came out really great. And I really give the, the two of those two gentlemen, Mr. Wolf and Branford and Mr. Marsalis, the credit for really keeping everybody on balance because Mr. Wolf was there. He would come out, come out and when I was in Louisiana and he would give me the backstory for what he envisioned this, where this song would be used, what would be happening, what the mood would be, what the attitude would be, that kind of thing. So I could infuse that into my performance. I really, it was, it was a great experience for me. Were you able to meet DeFeo Marsalis? Was he, was he there? DeFeo? No, no, just only Branford. He was the only person that I, I met. I remember, not not that long ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, I was fortunate enough to be invited to play and sing with the patriarch of the Marsalis. Oh, their Christmas. father. Yeah. Yes. He, their their family is, is amazingly talented and, yeah. and uh, knowledgeable. Winston They're Marsalis, like... DeFeo Marsalis, you know, mm -hmm. Branford. All of them yeah. so I got to play with the, the, you know, Marsalis Orchestra it was a big band. I got to play with them yeah. in New Orleans, and I had a and I had a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, it yes, was, it was it was such a treat, you know, um, to 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 have that kind of legacy, that kind of musicianship, that kind of care for the culture. Exactly. For the exactly. Culture. That's what I liked. I love that they and honor the culture. Exactly. And that is what I got being there working with them. And it was wonderful. It was just and like, I'm telling you, it went like butter. It was and this beautiful. is why we honor you because thank you, because you honor the culture. So I'm going to ask you one thing before we wrap this up. And it's such an honor to have you here today. Thank you so much. Um, tell us something that nobody knows about you. Something that nobody knows. That's kind of hard. <laughs> well, I walked on a Chinese wall. Oh, <laughs> I to, okay. I went, to Chinese, I went to the Chinese wall. I'd never been to China until a few years ago. And I went there to teach uh, my method that they asked me to come and work with a lot of professional singers that were there. And I stayed there for about eight weeks. And it was just the, the most fantastic experience I've had, and it was wonderful. And I got to see so much of China. Like it was, it was incredible. So I didn't, I didn't think I would get to go to the wall, but that wall is something, it's amazing. And uh, the scale of it, people in America, they think when, they, oh, they built a wall around the country. No, they built a freeway on top of it. That's what it is. It was a way to travel. And everything. I I didn't know that until I got there, and 
when you really go up on it, you can really see, you can ride horses up there. Wow. You, can, you can have a carriage up there. And, and uh, the noblemen in that time used, that's the way they moved them around for security and that kind of thing. It was really interesting. So I got to do that. What Not a beautiful the, story. Uh, well, it's so, uh, I'm so honored and delighted to have you here today on The Bare Facts. And I it's wish- It's my you pleasure too. And I'm so excited for your release and um, I, I love the music and I love, of course, I love working with 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 Tony Bronigal and and Johnny Johnny Lee Shell. They're they're the best. They are. They are. They are the best. And we'll, such we'll do more. People. We will do more. <laughs> well, I look forward to it. I really look. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm really um, I'm very proud and honored to be a part of it. Thank you for having me. Peace and love. Peace and love. Okay. Thank you.